<laughs> Hi, I'm Rusko. And I'm Val. And we're going to watch The Wandering Seder and give you guys some behind the scenes insight um, to what it was like yeah. putting together a game show TTRPG. Our so Rusko built that boat. Door to strength has been long. It's me. Been a long time. I actually built several boats. Like nine. Drinking. Sleep. That was the biggest one. Four nights, they will make two big ones. The idea of a hot bath, warm food. There's two of those. The cool mm -hmm. how, how long are they? Obviously excited. Four and a half feet. In the middle uh, of a loud sea shanty. It's about three feet high. It was about thirteen pieces. Yeah, when he brought it in, it reminded me of the GI Joe aircraft carrier from like 1986. It was pretty big. It was awesome. I spent hours and hours on that. And I played video games the entire time. So, what we did basically. Hold on. That was Beetle. We have a friend of ours that's a sound guy and a voice actor. A voice actor. Yeah, he's trying to do his best to uh, make it into the biz. I was like, you got to come do this stuff. He did great. He did. He did. The ocean around the boat swirls with a force never seen before. This was all. This is when they feel the CGI stuff was all done by the studio. Game of Blast, yeah. Something that we didn't know anything about. Yeah, we didn't know anything about. We didn't. We didn't. Round 10, have that in the in our imaginations when putting together the episodes, but it sure did come out pretty awesome. No, yeah, I was gonna put you in like a closet in the kitchen. Here's the die inspired twist. There are only two life. Right, all these people showed up. This is the first session. They better get creative and act. We walked around malls and uh, game stops and pretty much any place a TTRPG player would be hot topic. And a card, but like, would you like to be on our game show for five thousand dollars? And we found these people, and they showed up. We had no idea. Uh, we're in the back of the game keep in, in uh, Hermitage, Tennessee. Hermitage, Tennessee. Yeah. My character name is Tarvos. We had a set up for interviews. I remember talking to you about interviews. I was like, I really want to interview these people. And I didn't like the idea. Mm -mm. Like we're just straight doing a game show, huh? Yeah. So you're you're yeah. you're struggling with in there. Not whoever tied this. Uh, a little, a we came we came to a lot of uh, hardcore discussions on the way we wanted to look, and uh, we'd usually end up just saying, "Yeah, sure, we'll do it that way," or "We'll do it that way," and we walk away in our heads and go, "Like I'm going to do it my way, anyways." <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be the life right there. Here, yes, sir. Okay. Printing that map off. And rolling it out for the first time. Like, this is the biggest damn game map. It's, it's huge. 14 feet long. Yeah. Oh. We, we had a... There was a whole bunch of programs to make maps. So we had to print every map. Uh, during the course of the game, we used... How many maps? Six? More than that. More than that. Yeah, there's the boat map. Two, three... Yeah, there's like eight, nine. Yeah, something like that. We still have them. We don't have any room to put them. We could cover Hello, a house with them. Stay close. Uh, like a wallpaper. <laughs> wallpaper house with them. Hi, I'm Morgan Dickey. My character's name is Liana Drinkwater. So, and in the first she, session, uh, which is really interesting, one of the places I'm we went to go find uh, characters was, uh, there's a, the a, a group of people that play called the Land of Far. The and uh, we went to a couple Land of Far sessions. They, they do this at a bar. We went there, and so... A whole group of them came in together to work as a team and, and kind of save each other, but there's no saving. There's no saving. One of the things we talked about was, like, how are we going to do initiative? Because we have so many people, and we're like, dude, if... if yeah, we can't do it round by round. Or shimmering wave or, 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 yeah. So we got to do it where it's behind-the-scenes stuff, but everybody came in. Kind of check like the check-in process mm -hmm. and rolled their initiative right there, and they were they were seated around the table in their initiative order. So it still came it was still part of a game. You couldn't pick where you sat or who you sat next to. The dice picked that as well. It was like it, it was session per session because mm -hmm. everybody was mic'd up with microphones that we ran to the back of the gate, keep one soundboard. Can you imagine how chaotic that would have been if we had a roll initiative? Oh, yeah, you'd have to get up. Yeah, that's, what, that's why we, we knocked it. So, like, all right, take your mic off before you stand up and move. We'll just keep in track of it all. It would have been nuts. We made sure everybody knew everyone's race. 
on their little game cards because when someone came in we gave them uh, you know little name tags that would say their name their their, their character name and it would say what race they are human dwarf elf. But we didn't we didn't put in their their, uh, their class we figured it, if we want to get as as legitimate as possible uh, it wouldn't nine. be fair for someone to be able to nine. tell someone's class because you can't you start pulling you know. on the knot it starts coming free but yeah there's nothing that it's one of those situations where you're it's not one of those things that a bit worse. stands out um, yeah. the water is causing it to tighten <laughs> or shouldn't physically Soaked. be obvious yeah i mean you could the look at me and say that i'm a professor at a college right now even with the spray from the waves they don't seem to be no Lindsay, nobody would guess that Lindsay and oh layla this is her first time playing ever. First time I'm doing this. She's a great. Yeah, not just on the show ever TTRPG. She was actually friends. So 15 feet of your movement. Morgan. Or I think there's a couple people there that she knew. Yeah. These open barrels are all shut. She was actually dating somebody. Bottom of the crow's nest. Jazz. Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Self to it. All right. Give me, she great. give me a you have rope? Yes, I do. Give me a dex check to see how how well you tie this knot. <laughs> so they're so all you have, you each have, boat kind of slinging the rope. The way that it's the set mast. up is the, the wind So we have four boats in this convoy. Each boat has the equivalent to about snap. twenty people on each boat. Uh, each there, boat is so is a we did a Saturday morning, a Saturday night, a Sunday morning, and a Sunday night session. Each boat uh, coincided with those sessions. And you're right next to the handrail. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and use divine sense. Each boat has two lifeboats. Two lifeboats that hold four people. So when we were putting this game together, we knew we wanted to be put them in a situation where they had to make hard choices. We knew we wanted it to become a situation of it, you know, of life or death. Who who's it going to be? Who's going to who's going to make sacrifices? Who's going to compromise their, their, their morality? Uh, you know, what what happens when? Only a few of a group can survive. How do you pick? How do you decide who among the group gets to gets to go on? Right. And we wanted to jump into it really quick. But no one was hitting the DC check, which was ten. It was ten to untie, a, untie the rope. One rope from a lifeboat that has four rope, ropes connected to it, and no one could hit a ten. So we're going around the table in this first whole round, and no one can roll above a ten. Athletics. Or, they, or they'd roll the hit and they wouldn't do enough damage to cut the rope. Totally. Yeah. So it was okay. one of those, like, we tried really hard to predict as many possible variables as possible. We came up a little short on, yeah. a, on a few. Oh, there were so many times that I would look at Rusko from behind the camera and go, like, dude, something's got to give. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what are we going to do? Because at the end of the day, we're trying to make it an interesting show. We're, mm -hmm. we're trying to... We're trying to ramp up the drama as fast as possible. Now, but they just weren't having it. Uh, I will. I will add this in. If you listen to what he's saying now, nearby me. So one of the things that Rusko did so that we could speed up the process, because anyone that's ever played TTRBG, they know that all players ask tons of questions, right? So they say you're in this room, and then they go like, all right, "What's the roof?" How high is the yeah. ceiling? How wide is the room? What's the carpet made up? What you know? What colors? That and you're like, listen, you know, you're in this room. I'll explain it to you, but you're talking about stuff that doesn't make any sense. So to go ahead and knock that out, what we did was uh, every player for the first one or two rounds, even no, just the first round. It was just the first round. Yeah, we had this little tiny description. So when we said, all right, it's your turn, he would start it out by saying. You know, okay. I would give more description. He'd give a description right. of something. So well, as we so went, people help. were getting more and more description. You know, leaders. descriptions. Oh, this is Desmond. Obviously, there are not enough lifeboats for us all. We have so he came out swinging. Mm -hmm. first, then forming <laughs> Love him, hate then him. Perhaps finding He's a player. Obviously, he had he had his goals already sorted out. He did. He knew he wanted to make it past this round, and, and, and he did. <laughs> But even then, so we're we're we're, we're rattling off all these descriptions with each individual. Like right now, hold on. Has a very sulfuric and metallic yep. taste. All right. 
That's that's one of the descriptions. So as we're getting around for the first round, people are more and more clues yeah. without every single person asking 20 questions. asking yeah 20 or 30 questions because we were on a time limit. We had to make sure that this game, this session was over in about two and a half hours because we had one this night with 20 more people that come in later to to be on the second boat. Yeah, I think it went to three and a half. It was it three and a half? I think we had a three hour limit. But each boat went three and a half. Okay. But we were under a time limit nonetheless. It was, and since we've never done this before, we're going like, all right, what do we do? Um, our wives came up with an amazing idea that we would have never came up with that I really think helped keep people kind of satisfied as we set up a tent out back and had snacks and food available and drinks so that when we were, you know, bumbling through getting people registered and, and send it all up, there was a place they could go to just eat, <laughs> get drinks. If only we would have had a video camera out there. Oh, that's where they went to freaking really, after the first break, mm -hmm. you know. All the anticipation of what 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 is going on? Why is there so many people? Yeah. Well, that's where they, the first break is actually where they got to meet because they kind of shook hands kind of saw each other in the beginning waiting in the shop and then they'd roll initiative and then they'd sit down my name is nathan Pratuka, and i will be playing baron even bale i am a business analyst in real life and my character is a elven i really liked him mm -hmm. um but yeah after first break people were going on like all right this is what we got to do and by then people were already talking about like i want to go back in and start start killing people <laughs> Yeah, this is this is one of the reasons, right here. Uh, that's one of the reasons that they were ha we were having such a hard time getting people to roll a DC ten, and even you know just to cut a rope on a lifeboat. Um, well, there's so many variables that could that, one hundred percent variables can happen in one of these games that you, you you try and do your best. Like I mean, I went through the numbers. Like okay, they can average this much damage per attack. They can do. You know the, the the action economy of this many people. If you only have a you know a half of them cutting ropes, by the end we'd of round, be free. Yeah, by the end of round two, the, all the boats should be free, and and it just didn't happen that way. Now it wasn't the same on each boat, but there was definitely. I think this. I think there was two boats where I'm looking at like, okay, we've only got ten rounds to to come to a conclusion here, and they they need to get through this we get yeah through we, this. Need to, we need to step this up absolutely there's a lot of there's a lot of pivoting yeah but uh, that's but we all we did was pivot but we didn't want to pivot so much that it, it was like we're we're kind of forcing them we're railroading them into a story we still yeah we never to, wanted to take away agency because they still have to they still have to tell their story it's absolutely not, that's not our story to tell man my boats are so cool <laughs> same boat it, so tell them why we put them on boats in the first place this one's odds because they couldn't get off of them. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't get away. Yeah, when we first started thinking about how we're going to do this with this many players, you know, Russ was like 10. I was like, well, let's do 20. He was like, well, let's do 30. Let's do 80. <laughs> and then, you know, it's like, all right, how do we do 80 people? Like, well, first of all, we can't drop them in the middle of a city. Last time we met, because no. you, you dropped too many places they could go. Oh, yeah. You dropped that six was, people in a game in the middle of a city. It's I mean, like, the, all right, we're all running off. And you're like, the whole all right, convoy we're idea was literally like to keep how, them yeah, in order. How do we keep them in one spot? Now, we can start spreading out once they, you know, once we get to the second session, third session. But for the very first session, they have to be in a confined space. That was how we came up with the idea of the boats in the first place. Yeah, the boats to the island. Mm hmm. Like when they get here, it needs to be desolate and just dangerous. So that's gonna be, that's, that's gonna be in now, season two, we've already yeah. kind of started writing season two, and it, you know, obviously, I don't want to give anything away, but they don't. Be... Somebody survives the island, and uh, at least one person. At least one person, and we want to, we want to make sure that uh, you know, there's an overall story that we have that we want to follow. Right? I mean, we're actually there's a lot of stuff that we have planned. Because uh, we want it to be a campaign, yeah. You know, a it's a campaign. game show and a campaign, uh, a long campaign. It's crazy. This whole first season is Thank literally you. just yeah, a teaser for the story arc. Yeah, it's something. Not, like, yes, there's not a whole lot of, of what's actually going on in the story in season one. 
kind of under the boat. It's just it's, making it's, heroes. It's kind of you're, 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 you're finding I'm, heroes. I'm getting the knot, guys. Don't worry. Oh, Jack was such a good sport. <laughs> yes. Friends cantrip. <laughs> Desmond will call out, Fear will slay your mind, and cowards have no place on this ship. Like Throw them born poet. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Someone yells, Port side, hold on to something. As another wave comes had, crashing over. They should have had Beetle field. say something. Hey, I'm John, and my character's name is Dreg. Uh, Dreg stumbles a little bit and goes, what, what just happened? Oh, yeah. oh, what? And they were all fine. He's going to turn and try to make his way Our, towards the crate. It's, it's fun in the Discord. Go, I'm going to figure out. Watching people talk about the episode. Five, five, 10, 15, Oh, yeah. 5, 30, it's, you know, because a lot of people didn't. 20. You, you don't really. Go here. Even the players, they didn't know what happened on the other boats until they watch. All right. Go back and watch what happened on the other boat. All they know was happened on their boat. It stops. Uh, Jazz Silverflame, and There's I'm in cybersecurity. Jazz is a excommunicated seafaring half elf cleric. I like how a lot of people. One thing that we did was so that we could remind people that they sign up because we we did we started doing signups in 90 minutes or 90 days, 90 days before the actual game. And I was like, you know, day one, we got someone to sign up. And it's like, all right, cool. Now, me personally, 90 days, I'm not going to remember to show up for some game that I signed, you know, 90 days ago. So it's like, so how do we keep reminding people without annoying, you know, or, or email spamming them? And what we did was was basically uh, send them emails every single week but instead of saying hey remember you signed up for this game we told them a story about we told them a story about what's happening on their boat up until the point that they walked in to play the game and then the boat starts to crash so everyone coming into the game didn't necessarily know each other but they knew but they knew the boat break off the grates to the cargo cargo holds those will float we can secure them further the dinghies now and then i'll move to from I'm number six, I'll start dashing to 95 as my goal point, and I will. Be so yeah, everybody, <clears throat> everybody comes in. And they, they all have the same kind of starting spot. Room. They all know that they have, they're all privy to the same information. They just don't know what's coming next. Yeah. And it actually all does too, right? So we spent we we spent probably eight months um, preparing for all this. So we had to create, it started with, okay, here's the campaign, here's the people, but what, what world do they live on? Oh, we need to make a world. Okay, where the world come from? Oh, we need to make gods, okay? So there was a lot of writing so that we, we knew the story so that if someone starts throwing stuff at us, we would know it by heart. Well, one of the things the emails helped us do was really flush some of that out, flush some of that out to tell a story weekly so that by the time, and we didn't, we didn't tell one story weekly. We told four stories weekly because every boat got an email and it was a different email from, they, we, they were all captain's journals. That's how we, that's how we did it. So these are all like journal entries. As the ship leans from forward, captains, the from their captain, into the on their boat. For anyone to survive. And it really kind of helped flesh out the world. But as they're approaching Black Glass Island, they're all they're all aware of the fact that this is a dangerous area. Yes. That, but they're all aware of it from a, from a different perspective. But there's also, yes, and there's also stuff on the boats in the captain's journals. Like, they thought that they were there, you know, picking up some work, you know. And there's an underlining story that's already starting with the campaign that i don't even know well, technically we couldn't put it on them to notice that right away because they're right now they're just fighting for their life i mean you could try to be doing something but a shipwreck really <laughs> puts a damper on the week so you know but it will pull back this inside this story that you you know it seems like everyone just shipwrecked but there's a lot of clues in there that lead into a into our other story into the storyline for black last island like we've already put out two of the of the captain's journals videos we got a couple more to put out um but in those journals is a lot of building the foreshadowing a lot of them understanding more about the island itself the character the the npcs or the characters that aren't the players uh 24. so boat two huh? now has three ropes that have been untied 
You still have a move action. I'll yeah. just move to the back of the boat. It's uh, a 164. We did have the jib at the bow of the like ship the, snaps and is full of the lines between or before people's turns. Probably should have. Looking uh, back, Moore, perhaps came up with some different uh, ones for each Barton boat. With, so each uh, boat Vander had a little Moore, bit different. Because not each boat crashed the same. Things. Yeah, they all crashed different. I mean, it was all this, the same cause, but it was a different description. Uh, yeah. Uh, one boat was getting thrown around in circles. One just came to a stop. The one, yeah, was impaled and just one, stopped. One kind of bounced out of the water. And, and, and we still haven't released yet we the the what's really happening with the island why the island's doing what it's doing in the first place and that's part of the story so we're not going to do it right now either <laughs> but yeah yeah there's uh you know the players that survive the boats that made it to the island they learn a little bit more they make it to the end of the island they learn a bit more they get technically said they survive the island and then but they have no idea what's about to happen next. And uh, the person or people that survived will go into season two. We'll add more people uh, around that and we'll basically start the process again, but at like level three, I do believe. Yes, yeah, so anybody that did survive, if anybody survived, uh, would have or will have made it to level three i love alabin to be able to to be seen you yeah he's fun yeah he was one of those guys from apart. towards the rallying leader of desmond ropes snap you can tell he put a lot of time into oh yeah uh, well, you can tell who showed up and had time for the characters and who showed up going like hey i'm gonna just you know yada 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 which brings me full circle back to why there were so many pirates you know uh we start sending out these emails like oh you're on a ship and uh you got hired to just you know, be a work hand from the door to strength. And so people automatically came in like, oh, dude, I'm going to be a pirate because it's going to give me the best, uh, you know, abilities and a lot of a lot of bonuses in my roles because I know a lot of sea stuff and knowledge checks and all that. Yeah, everybody. And it helped for the first session. For the first round. <laughs> for the first round, that's right. Because you might have a bunch of skills in, in seafaring, but... Uh... Do you have any skills in being stranded? Oh yeah, on a deserted island. Yeah, it's not deserted. They found that out pretty quickly. They could possibly get to the other boat. This one? Yeah, I have 35 feet. I know I can't get there if I use the stairs. I was hoping I might be able to jump over. So, did you think? Okay. I mean, I know you did. But... How nervous so, were you? So I couldn't have hopped over the rail. I mean, honestly, I could tell you're nervous. I was outside smoking. I was way more nervous. Hey, I get it. With the lead up, I was way more nervous when we were getting when we were setting up. As soon as it was game time and I started, you know, giving my lines and reciting the the, the stuff that needed to be explained, uh, I got into the I got into to the game master mode and. It, it, I was way less nervous, but well, all, everything up until the point where I'm doing this, I was nervous. I think we, I mean, like I said, we spent a lot of time. You can't hit every variable, but we spent a lot of time. I mean, that was one of the things. I mean, we had, it, this wasn't the first idea for the boats. I mean, we, the first it was going to be one gigantic boat and we were going to have separate tables um, where there were like, what, eight people at each table, something like that. Yeah. And then if that's all different, the, the map would have been uh, like Is it a, sorry, dex check. cut in pieces to where it's like, okay, you're at this table, you're in this section of the map. If you move, you would move to a different table. And then we were going to put uh, the lifeboats. But that was another problem with people moving all over the place. And that's right. It, it, it got crazy with the mics. But it also got crazy to the point where it's like, okay, how do we control this? Well, then we talked about having more than one DM. We're like, dude, we could have a... We could have you as a DM, but then we have like GM, a, yeah. a, a GM, sorry, where we could have, um, it'll be different. Uh, it'll be different. Um, what are we like kind of judges, not judges, but like referees mm -hmm. kind of every table, making sure everyone's keeping clean. But the more we went down that road, we're like, dude, this, this is not going to work. We're going to have to put them together. In one giant you. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but there was also scenarios, so many scenarios. Well, another thing with, with that, with, with that, potential game plan was 
not everybody's interacting with each other. And that was something that we really wanted. We wanted everybody at the table interacting with each other and getting that, that feel of this is a big game. Oh, 100%. And if we split everybody up in little groups, we weren't going to get that. 100%. And we also had to look at it. One of the things where it was like, dude, how do we keep it as fair on our side as we possibly can have? Can, that we keep it as, as balanced as we can keep it. I mean, we ran scenarios like, dude, what if, you know, this is it. I mean, uh, 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 at first level or whatever, a uh, uh, half orc barbarian is going to crush, uh, you know, a wizard, a, half a, half, you know, a halfling wizard. It's going to crush him. And we're like, well, you know, it's that's life. Uh, we didn't tell them what what to play. They decided what to play. It was very interesting. Who did survive versus who didn't because of they just played their character right. They knew what they could do and what they could. There was a lot of stuff. I was like, that was really creative. I think in the beginning we, we kind of picked out who we thought was going to make it to the end, toward to the end at least. I mean, not survivors, but we, we kind of had some people picked that we thought were going to make it all the way to the end. And I know I wasn't very correct. Oh no, not yeah, not at all. I mean, I was. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I had my favorite characters. I was like, if they make it, that'd be great. My wife had her favorite characters, and uh, when they didn't make it, she was very upset. She was very sad. She's like, well, "That sucks." And I'm like, "Well, that's life. That's life." We would we would come up with enemies. Like, I love this. <laughs> uh, we would come up with uh, like certain enemies to put them against, and then we'd have to run the scenario, going like, "Okay, let's play." So we would. We would create this enemy and then go like, all right, do it this way or do it this way. All right, roll against it, roll against it. All right, it was just a slaughter. It wasn't a slaughter. Yeah, there was one. There was one monster that was like, it was designed. This monster is going to kill everybody. And then I'm like, no, I don't think so. And then somebody, so somebody ran the monster, and I played all of the we we because we had all the character sheets. Oh yeah, of all the players, I ran the and I killed that monster in the first round. Yeah. I'm like no, like yeah, yeah I destroyed it. The the action economy of this many people is so it's big. You are so much damage can be done if the group knows how to work together. Uh, that's oh, the first. Jack. Yeah, Jack. Such a good sport. I betrayed. I was murdered. I love it. Into the ocean, and then I drowned and died. She's awesome. Um. Yeah, dude, we, uh, I came up, uh, and then this damn horse. Oh, yeah. So no one, so <laughs> I was against it from the beginning. I was like, all right, we have, we have two lifeboats, eight people. That's all. That's the only ones who can survive. And then Russ was like, well, what if someone does something really creative? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, what if a half gets put in a barrel mm -hmm. and gets thrown over the edge? I'm like, well, well, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you someone comes no. up with that scenario. You can't say no to, to everything because that, that's just the fun part of the game. That's right. Is, is there, it's not definitive. Your imagination can save you if you one hundred percent if you use your imagination. So that we kind of we kind of reference the half in the barrel scenario for a lot of things. Oh yeah. Like when. Okay. Well, what if, what about the halfling in the barrel? Because I mean, the whole show. We're like, well, what about the halfling in the barrel? Yeah. While we're filming all of them. One hundred percent. Because you you can never predict. Of what somebody's going to come up with. You can't do it with three people at a table, let alone no, 20. Yeah, 11, 20. Yeah. And and when they broke off a horse, I looked at Russ going, I was like, yo, if it, you know, because I would whisper stuff to him all the time. I'd just walk up to <laughs> him. Did you say something like horse in a barrel? I'm like, what? Yeah. So, so I was like, yeah. So a horse in a barrel. I was like, dude, if, if he plays it legit and it makes sense, then fine. But he's got to hit the rolls and not all these people can make it on this horse. But period. You know, it's not just like he got on the horse in the water either. No, they, a group of them took all of their time preparing this horse for an impossible swim to shore. It would, it would just, it would have, wouldn't have been fun if we didn't give it a chance. One hundred percent. Now, at the same time, we didn't even expect the horse. So that's that's another thing about going into it with twenty people or even more than 20 people, technically 20 people at a time. But it's it's like, there are people that have yeah. read the book backwards, forwards, and they, ups and downs. They and snuck in things here and there. Because we vetted all the character sheets. Mm -hmm. But and it's like OPP, you know, or OP, play, OPP, uh, OP players 
they know how to do it, right? I mean, they just go in like, you want me to create a character that's going to just dominate at first level? This is what you do. Boom, 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 boom. And then you're like, I know we can handle it. And then it's like, wait, what else do you get? Why else do you get this? What is happening? Yeah, you, you get a horse? Like, okay, well, you know, you made it through the vetting. Yeah. And, and we were really, really against, again, against taking away agency. I mean, we wanted people... It wasn't just no. our game. We wanted it to be exactly. their game, no, and the no. more we could, more. You, are you a the more we could I'm a, I'm a, work with I'm their imagination and what they're you, doing, no, the more they'd fight to stay alive. Because they feel like, hey, dude, I created this character. This character is going to go all the way. Period. You know. Yeah. Imagine if we handed them all pre-generated characters, right? And they're like, we want you to be invested in this game. We want you to really be passionate. It'd be really hard. You, you, you can't do it as well as you as if you're. If you built the character, one hundred percent the backstory, one hundred percent. And that was the one thing. That's I mean, that's why we decided to do the player interviews because when we're doing this, it's it's chaotic. It's it's fast. It's we got to get in there and even even cut them down into to 10, 15, 70 minute episodes. You know, there's a lot of material that we're like, dude, I'd really love to get it in there, but you know, we want to also make sure that the viewer can get as much power you know from much action or whatever as it can and um that's why i went back and started doing the the interviews for players the player interviews on our youtube channel so that we could take time and delve into one character at a time and say all right now you tell us your backstory now this makes sense this is why you were on the boat this is your whole entire story which is one of the best parts about you know ttrpgs fantasy ttrpgs is like you know I don't know. I'm sure there are but my, my friends, unless they're sitting in for an NPC or, hey, this is a quick game we're gonna do. The roll up a character real quick. Most of my friends take take pride and time and go like, let me tell you what this is and and my backstory and who I am and why I'm here and what I'm doing. And we couldn't do that in the in the show because we could we just couldn't show it. They had it. We just couldn't show it every time. I mean, even in the interviews. It, they they told us about their character, but in order to get keep it in time, it was like my name is psh, my character is, psh, and then they had to go. But they would say more than that. I'm like my character is Yada, and I'm from here. And maybe still survived, but in character the whole time. Yeah, I was I was watching. Not who I am, and Liana in Drinkwater is now. She's got the death certificate. Yeah, the death certificate is some player. Yeah. So we did we did death certificates. Um, it was a pretty clever idea. It was it was that was your idea. It was a clever one. Well, it's because I was nervous about creating all these ways for people to die. I was like, how do we give them something if they get kicked off the show? That's pretty cool. And I was like, well, that'd be pretty cool. But I I ripped that off from Faces of Death, uh, the movies way back in like the eighties and late eighties. You went to go. I saw Faces of Death four at the theater, and if you sat through the entire movie, when you left, they gave you this Faces of Death death certificate, like you pass it. So that's where I, I got it from. I was like, man, man, that was really cool. Well, part of it, I remember part of it too was like, well, what if they don't want to up the character sheet? What if it? Yeah. What if it? Yeah. What if it's embarrassing or something? What if we make it fun to rip your character sheet? Like you get something for it. Absolutely. Because we really wanted them ripping up their character sheets for the camera. And people, actually, was there anybody that didn't? I think there was. No, I think they all did it. Okay. I think they all did it. I think we missed a couple people doing it, but I think everybody did it. Yeah, Aaron did it. There, you can tell on some faces, though. Some of them were real reluctant. Yeah, they didn't want to. Well, they just didn't want to die anyways. Give you a shove in the chest. I mean. I guess I shouldn't really be too surprised. And it begins. Yeah. So yeah, it just it's gets it starts getting vicious. It does. And some people just got you know screwed. I mean, they really did. They just they just it was just unlucky at the, the time. The flotilla. Yeah, and as I do that, I, I look at this in, in the eyes. <laughs> Tears begin to come, come rolling down. Sorry, brother. You know it's crazy. Betrayal. Yeah, betrayal. <laughs> So, one of the other things we had to do was when we were putting it all together, like, all right, this is a lot of people and it's going to be a lot of filming. How do we keep these people coming back? Right? I mean, how do how do we keep them coming back? I mean, things are going to come up. That's when I came up with the uh, 
proxy player, which I, I regretted like, right away. Mm, it was such an editing nightmare. It was an editing nightmare. It, it was one of those things where I'm glad we did it to keep people in. Season season two, never doing. There's anything. gonna be some rule changes in season two about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Rule rule number one for season two: Val doesn't get to make any more damn rules. It'll be fun. Really, really frustrated with the storm. What are you gonna do? Alabine's the one who got him up the steps. Alabine, knowing this. Although Alabine coming in and or Alexander coming in and playing for Desmond with that wig. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. He was a proxy. Everyone got one. Suddenly flying with Nays and says to the horse Moonwiper. So the closer it got. Towards, you, you, you can see the look on my face there where the horse situation is starting to, to evolve into a halfling in a barrel. Yeah. And I'm I'm trying to make sense of how do I... Moon Wiber lets out a disapproval. <laughs> I, I'm trying to make sense of like, how, how, how do I kill this horse and without looking like I'm just killing the, damn, killing horse. the damn horse. And I kept telling you, I was like, I can't. And I would walk up to Rusko at the worst times. Yeah. When and I just do this and just go, and then walk away and be like, I have no idea what you just said. Yeah. I think I just started cussing at you one time. Like, yeah. stop. Stop. Whispering in my damn ear. <coughs> Dude. When I'd walk up to him, the whole players in the room would just yeah, you, like pin drop quiet. Yeah. Like, what's he saying? Who's he going to kill? Who is he? And then, and then you would whisper in my ear, and then you would leave the building. I leave. <laughs> well, a lot of these scenarios, like, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a pacifist, but I'm not too far from it. And a lot of these scenarios, I'm like, yeah, dude, that's going to hurt. That's going to be awkward and kill people. That's going to be crazy. And I'd be in there like, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> so I'm leaving. <laughs> Just, I'd turn around and you were gone. Oh, we go on. I would be outside the back door. Some, I mean, I heard you laughing from outside the back door a couple of times. As, as everything's devolving into chaos. Yes. People are getting angry and mm -hmm. you're just giggling. Outside. I'm like, no, I'm out. I'm out. I said, if anyone attacks you, I'm just going to film it. <laughs> I want to keep you the, wanted me to get beat keep the cameras so rolling. It would be great. It still would have been great footage. During breaks, Rusko would come out and and I'd, I'd, I'd walk up to him and uh, we'd go off and start talking about things. And he, he'd be like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man. But, but I'd look over and be like, "But they're eating the pizza that we got out there, so everything looks okay." <laughs> they're having fun. They're, they're having cookies fun. They're eating cookies and, and stuff. stuff. They all got a pop. Yeah. After being attacked and and feeling the uh, the stress oh, yeah. now, was... I'm gonna cut the rope. Okay. Did you get the sense as the game was going on in the beginning, it was very like. Nobody wanted to make the first move. Nobody wanted to step too far outside of the lines, but as it started to progress, people were getting a little more comfortable. The levity in the room started to get up a little bit. One hundred percent. And then it's like as people started, like as the laughs started, the laughs got bigger. As the drama started, the drama got bigger. Oh, one hundred percent. The people in the room were just getting more and more into it as, as time went by. Oh, dude. We and then we killed them all. Oh, yeah. Episodes later on, they some some of the situations we put them in are so intense that it's like, you know, we had people, we had people, we had we had someone leave. I mean, I'm not ruining anything, but we had someone leave the show. Yeah, just say I'm not. They 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 wrote an email to us and said, "Look, this is my character. It's too intense. It's too much. I I just don't want to do it anymore because people started really turning on each other, and then." It wasn't a game. People were holding grudges against each other, like in real life. I mean, it's like prank calls and, and <laughs> I don't, I don't know anything about that. People getting swatted. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But I do know that it was like, you know, some of our outro interviews were like, you know what? Beep, 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 and beep, 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 and I, I'll, I hope they beep, beep, beep. Yeah. I'm like. Are you talking about their player? Are you talking about like yeah. their character? Are you talking about them? Because <laughs> that's really me talking about them like that. I was always very worried that somebody was just going to hate me. Well, I did. I mean, not you. I don't care if you do, but I mean, like the players. I was always afraid that someone was just going to really just hate me. Yeah, I mean, we did. That's one of the reasons, and we don't get it into these episodes. But that's one of the reasons why we had, you know, GMs, guest GMs. We're like, dude, how do you? How do you keep it fair 
when there's money on the line and you're, you know, in essence, God that could just strike somebody down. I mean, it's like, you know, roll a constitution check of a, of a 58 or have a heart attack and die. It's like, well, that sucks. Yeah. You know? So uh, we had people come in and roll, and, and, as you see in later episodes, we had guests, uh, DMs, Another one GMs, of those episodes, or one of those moments where I just don't know, just don't know what to do. Oh, about the horse? Yeah. Did it just jump in the water? I missed it. The horse neighs and disapproves. No, they're just tying more barrels. Oh, they're tying more barrels to it. He says to the back, to the front. Where are you tying the barrel? Where's the barrel being attached to this thing? I guess. And and I think the Gamma Less did such a great job Mm. of having a horse with just barrels stuck to it. I feel like they were starting to feed off each other in these moments. So, like, look at the stress on on Rusko's face. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody get a barrel. Let's see if Rusko cracks. Absolutely. Did you see that guy look, looking over? Mm-mm. Go go back a little bit. It's pretty funny because we're in a game shop right now. Uh, uh, the 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 game keep. Uh, but they were still open. They were open on Saturday morning. So oh, yeah. there were like customers coming in to the front and they were over peeking over. And I think there's a guy you see that uh, someone like right over the edge. He's like looking kind of over like what, what's going on in there. People are yelling and. There's cameras and stuff set up. I think it's correct me if I'm wrong. All right, yeah, you get it. Okay. My screen's really small. Give me a check to tie yourself to the horse. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. You have attached yourself to this damned horse. So they're all attaching themselves to this barrel and doing something that, in all the variables we came up with, didn't have a, a horse. We didn't think anyone would have a horse in their backpack. So we you know? obviously didn't map out. You know what to do with the how horse. Many bor- how many barrels will require to make your horse float? That's right. How many people could be on a horse with X amount of barrels tied to it? So this was. But once again, though, this was. Yeah, just winging it. Winging it. That's our sign. If you ever see me and Russell look at each other and go like this, that means we have no idea what we're doing. We're, we're about just, to. We're about to. We're about to come up with some stuff on the fly. Go straight forward. But it did. This was. You know on a different boat on the next boat or was it the boat the next day on one of the later boats someone had a donkey and you looked at it, it's like it's the damn horse again yeah and i was like just did, chill just chill let's, make it through that i said let's just see what he does you know and he didn't decide to tie any barrels to his donkey he said my donkey can swim he just jumped off the boat in the water so his his dcs were a little different <laughs> i'll say hi to our ancestors for her and then i do a gator off the door so I love it. We captured real heartbreak. I love it. Yeah, real emotions. I'm telling you. She was awesome. He was awesome. She chucked her necklace. She's never played before. I know. That's and it, and it shows too because she's like, I'm not really gonna do it. Like we would expect her to so like rip, rip off her necklace. necklace. She's like, I'm not gonna really do it, but I, I rip up my necklace and throw it in the ocean. That's, that's fair. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Tear apart your jewelry. Um, he goes. I love it. Put the mask on. The horns comes on. Love it. I'm rolling the beep out of this boat. There's the horse. <laughs> Oh, uh, it took about an hour to get a <coughs> shot, too. We're going to do either an athletics or an acrobatics check. For those of you who are attached. Uh, that's what I did. I whispered you. I was like, as a giant I was like, wave in the shape two of, of these people have to lift. Down. Mm-hmm. Everyone else has to go. Pull you guys so this is the only boat that had more than eight people survive. Mm-hmm. This had ten. It. And it was the first one. So we learned from the mistakes and then went to the next, yeah. the next couple boats. I feel like the chaos uh, was handled much better smoother in the in the sessions after this i love the numbers i should say yeah. i can see this on my screen too but his screen's a lot bigger than mine the our friends the at down west do such a I great job editing this <laughs> love the exit interviews it was very important that's that or not it felt very much like the ungentlemanly he's a great to player do. too but my he's got some epic moments coming up yeah i didn't know he wasn't english so until like my, my job four or five sessions <laughs> Because he kept that English accent, yeah, the, like the almost the entire time. I'm like, wait, you're not even English. I, I literally thought he was English because he did such a good job. I just took charge. I think we've got an interview book with him in the future. Nice. Neo, Neo, Soul God. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. 
but Love it. You know, my priority was yeah. <laughs> sure enough. Oh yeah, no, yeah. one hundred percent. I'd kill everyone in my boat yeah. everybody, everybody. without hesitation. No oh, remorse. Yeah. Mask comes on, horn comes out, I they can go overboard. The, uh, <laughs> primary difference between me and the I love it. Is that I brought a horse with me. And, uh, Look at small. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> genius, dude. Friend, I mean, he grew up with, and he succeeded if I ever open a racetrack, it's just gonna be him on the gate. I brought a horse. Like, bring a horse, dude. You want to win? Bring a horse. It was so fun watching these things come together. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that wraps up the Seder. And it was, the Seder. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun uh, talking about stuff. We still left a lot of stuff out, but we still got four or three more boats to do. So we'll make sure and we, we got stuff in there. Future episodes to do. Yeah. There's a lot of death. There's a lot of death coming. So. Yeah. Stick right. around, stay tuned, watch our stuff, like and subscribe.